Доклад Харуна Тарина из Пакистана. Мнение о чеканке монет без монетного двора или без даты серебряных и медных со ссылкой на Гуюка и Мухаммада. Харун, вам слово. Yes, I'm, I'm with you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon from a very hot sizzling Islamabad. The temperature here is 44 and we are uh, running, uh, you know, power outages. So as you can see, I'm sitting in a dark room because the electricity is off right now. But I'm ready with my presentation. So if, if, if I, I'll, I'll start now. Okay, okay, okay. Can you see the uh, screen now? Can you see the presentation? No. No, not. No, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll, I'll... Now? Yes, it's okay. 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 Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, my gratitude uh, is to the organizers for providing me the opportunity to present my findings before an August gathering of eminent numismatists. Particularly, my profound thanks to Dr. Mitieva Alexandra Viktorovna uh, and to uh, Mr. Vladimir Belaev. Uh, the coins of, uh, coins of Muhammad citing Guyuk Khan as overlord. Of the great Khans, Guyuk, son of Ogudai, had the shortest reign. Of his listed coins, Dr. Uh, Stephen Elbum has mentioned eight uh, different types of his coins for Guyuk. Uh, the first one is a uh, dirham. Uh, I have given the numbers in the uh, presentation and they will be there in the printout also, so I will not read the numbers individually. And the second is a uh, copper false. It is the same as the uh, silver dirham. Then the third one is a dirham with the uh, somewhat different legend and uh, the mint name in Uyghur or the Mongol script. The fourth one is a fractional dirham. Uh, it is also usually expected that it is from Khwarzam Mint. Then the fifth one is a dirham. Then the sixth one is a copper broad dirham with his name in the central area. And the seventh is a, a silver dirham, which is uh, similar to the earlier queen's uh, coins where the king is on the horseback facing left or right. Then there is the Jital from uh, Shofar Khan, which is alluded to Guyuk by uh, virtue of the date 645. All those uh, Jitals are dated 645. And they have a square, uh, mint is mentioned in a square on one side. Then these coins, these three coins are not uh, listed in the checklist. The, there is a silver dirham, but they are, they are mentioned on, they are, they are given on Zeno. There is this uh, silver dirham of Guyuk, citing him by name. And there is one specimen on Zeno, where it is Al-Mulk Lilla on one side, uh, the country is for God, and on the other side is Guyuk Khan. Then there is the gold dinar of Guyuk, uh, citing his name and issued from the mint of Bukhara. This is also available on Zeno. Uh, 247525. And then there is the copper dirham of Guyuk, where his name is mentioned on one side as Guyuk Khan. And I'm not sure if album uh, number 3755 is the same coin as this one, but I don't think so. That I think that, that's a different coin. Now, there remain some copper and silver coins that have not yet been identified. One specimen has been offered for sale at the uh, Stephen album uh, rare coins auctions, and there are three specimens posted at Zeno. These coins are somewhat like jitals in terms of their size, fabric, and style, and Dr. Album attributes those to an unknown ruler by the name of Muhammad. Nine different images of those coins have been collected 
of that ruler from three different sources. Other than the four images mentioned earlier, five images of those coins are from my own collection. By collecting all the coins at one place, it can be seen that the coins contain the following legends. And based upon their, those legends, I presume that these enigmatic coins were issued during the reign of Guru Khan by a Muhammad, by a person named Muhammad, who was a Shiite king. He was a Muslim, but uh, from belonging to the Shiite uh, sect. In my view, that could be only the Batine Imam Alauddin Muhammad, as there was no king in that area during the reign of Guru who had the name of Muhammad and who would be a Shiite. Now, the first coin is the one from uh, Stephen Album Rare Coins, uh, Lot 399. On one side is Khan Al Adil, you can see Khan Al Adil, and on the other side is Muhammad Al Malik. I'll explain this uh, Al Malik later on in, in this presentation. The second coin is from my own collection. It is Muhammad Al Malik over here and Guyuk Khan. Al Adil. I'll, you can you'll see another specimen just now. This third coin is also from my own collection, and it says Muhammad uh, Al Malik. And Al Malik is not very clear over here in this in this image. But Guyuk, you can see Guyuk is very clear, and Khan is clear, and Al Adil is also clear. Although it is some part of the legend is off the flan but it is very clear that it is Guyuk Khan Al Adil. Then this fourth coin is also from my own collection and it says Muhammad and the, the rest of the uh, uh, Al Malik uh, portion is obliterated, but then so is the name Guyuk, but Khan Al Adil is visible. Then we have the fifth coin. It is also Muhammad Al Malik. And there is this also this what I call insignia and is generally described as a tamga because I, I, I don't call these as tamgas. Tamga is something else. And uh, this is gyuk and gaf, wow, and kaf, gyuk, and then khan, and then aladil. Then the sixth image is from Zeno. It says Muhammad al Malik and gyuk khan aladil. Guyuk is not very clear, but it is. It can be if, 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 if one focuses on it, it is clear. Then we have the seventh image. This is also from Zeno, and uh, Muhammad al Malik, and Guyuk is very clear. This is the uh, probably the most clear coin with the name Guyuk. There's Gaf, Ye, Wow, and this is Kaf again. So Guyuk and Khan is there, and then Al Adil. One can see the An and Alif Al Adil. The eighth coin is from my collection, and this is a bit different. It says Muhammad al Malik, but on the other side is not the name of Guyuk Khan, but Kalima. And the Kalima is Shiite Kalima. La ilaha illallah Muhammad or Rasulullah, and then there is Ali. This is one can see here Ali. Ali Waliullah. And the last coin is also from Zeno, and it says Guyuk can be seen here, Guyuk Khan al Adil. It is quite cursive. Uh, script and Muhammad Rasulullah. On this one, the name of uh, uh, the, the king is not there. Muhammad al-Malik is not there. Muhammad Rasulullah. Now, this is a summary of these uh, nine coins. The Muhammad al-Malik, Khan al-Adil, Muhammad al-Malik, Muhammad al-Malik, and Guyuk Khan al-Adil then they all go the same way up to here. And then there is Muhammad al-Malik with Shiite Kalima, and then there is the Kalima with Guyuk Khan al -Adil. Now, this is the word al-Malik. This is, I've highlighted, the, taken it from four, four of the coins over here, and I've highlighted how it is written al-Malik. It is very stylized. And there is the, this also the Tamra, or, or the, what I call the uh, emblem which was used by Ogudai and also by his son, Guyuk. This is the reverse S Tamra, or the uh, emblem as I call it. Once it is established that the coin pertains to Guyuk or to his reign, it has to be ascertained 
which of the contemporary kings within the area were under Mongol suzerainty had the name Muhammad and who also professed the Shiite faith. I have not been able to identify any king by the name of Muhammad or any ruler or any governor who was present in that area during the period corresponding to Buyuk's brief rule, except the Batinid Imam Alauddin Muhammad, who ascended the throne at the age of nine years in November 1221, 618 AH, and after his father Jalaluddin suddenly passed away, he reigned till December 1255, Shawal 653, when he passed away due to excessive drinking at the age of 43. His first name was Muhammad. And when Guyuk became Khakan al Azam, Great Khan, Alauddin Muhammad was 34 years old. It is likely that the Batinids, in their effort to appease the Mongols, had the name of Guyuk as the judicious Khan al Adil inscribed on their local coins alongside the name of Muhammad on the reverse. Due to absence of mint and date on all these coins, exact location and period cannot be determined. And it might well be possible that those coins were issued elsewhere than Mazandan region by the Batinids. There is a remote possibility that the word read as al-Malik could instead be either the words Molana or Imam inscribed rather stylistically. Molana is unlikely though, because the alphabet meme is missing. After all, the Batinids, as the words signifies, carried their faith in quite in secrecy. They still do. And ascribing the words Molana or Imam to their leader openly would have somewhat been offensive or the two main sects of Muslims, the Shiite, who considered their 12th Imam to be in hiding and expected the Imam to reveal himself near the end of the world, and the Sunnis, who considered the founders of the four major schools of Islamic jurisprudence as Imams, Imam Abu Hanifa, Shafi'i, Malik, and Imam Hanbal, Ibn Hanbal. Still, coin number eight carries the Shiite Kalama, which points to Ismaili linkages. During Jalaluddin Mongburni's campaigns in eastern Khorasan, many local rebellions had erupted against the Mongols, and a local general by the name of Muhammad al-Murghani even had the audacity to make raid, apparently unsuccessful, upon the camp of Chinggis Khan. These coins bear the name of Guyuk, and therefore they cannot be ascribed to that Muhammad al-Murghani. I am of the view that these well, this is my opinion. I'm of the view that these coins were issued by or under the authority of Ismaili Batini Imam Alauddin Muhammad bin al Hassan during the reign of Guyuk Khan, and that these undated and mintless coins were probably issued at some place where a significant number of followers of that faith were present. Now, it has been mentioned in historical chronicles that when Halaku, Halagu entered Iran at the head of a large army, he required of Motasham, the Ismaili Dai, or the local ruler of Kohistan region, to surrender all his forts within Kohistan. Motasham was then an old man. He obeyed without any hesitation. And in return, he was rewarded by an appanage at Tun, which is located south of Mashhad and is now known as Firdos. Motasham is also mentioned at another place in an earlier reference as a, to be a young man when he was appointed as Dai by Imam Jalaluddin and sent to Kohistan. This fact indicates that Batinids were spread much beyond Mazandaran region or Syria and the Levant, and they had spread to various areas within Khorasan and southern Iran, where they possessed forts and contiguous tracts of land, not very large areas, but forts and the adjoining areas. They would certainly have issued local coinage from those forts and the peripheral areas within their control. The dotted circle type coins are generally said to have been issued at Eastern Khorasanian mints, particularly the Ghazna region and Kuraman Valley area. Motasham was the Dai, chief preacher of the Batni Ismailis in the Kohistan region. He was later on awarded an apanage at Tun by Hulagu. This is indicative of Ismaili presence all over Kohistan and Khorasan. This is, this is the Kohistan region, this is Tun. And you know the, the, the original Batini presence was somewhere here. So this is they, they had their presence all over. They even had earlier, uh, a couple of centuries earlier, they had even occupied Bhutan. However, the presence of Ismailis was scattered in different castles, most of which were at significant distance from each other. The land contiguous to those castles and forts were often not possessed by the Ismailis. They just 
owned the, the forts and the castles. They didn't own really the, 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 the peripheral areas. I take an ex, I've taken an extract from a translation of the Dabistan. It is an old um, book. Uh, in the, the, the translation itself was made in, by David Shia and Anthony Trevor in Paris in 1843. And it says, we observe two great divisions of the Ismailis, namely the Western, to whom alone till now the account of the Dabistan referred, and the Ismailia of Iran, that is, those who established themselves in the strongholds of Kohistan, Khurasan, and in Rudbar, which is last name, which is which last is the name of a fort in the province of Jabal or Persian Iraq. So coin number eight appears to be an early coin as it carries the name of Guyuk only alongside camera. That must have been issued sometimes during 1246 AD. Later on, the issuing authority added the name of Muhammad as king. However, coin number seven, silver dirham, appears to be an issue subsequent to the death of Guyuk as his name was replaced by Shi'at Kalma. It could have been issued at any time between 1248 to 1255. The legend on coin seven extends beyond the flan, but Anne of Ali is distinctly visible, as I mentioned earlier. You can see here. This is, this is my imaginary uh, drawing of the, the, the legend, which, is, uh, which must have been there outside the flan, which should exist for the completion of the Kalima. Now, the calligraphy on these coins has some similarity to that on the coins of Muhammad bin al Hassan from Balda Iqbal Ment, Balada Iqbal Ment, though that cannot be made the basis for conclusive attribution. The word Muhammad, as it appears on four of the aforementioned coins, as compared to the calligraphy of a Batinid Diram of Alauddin Muhammad from Balada Iqbal Ment, can be seen here. These four coins are the ones that I have um, revealed earlier, and this is the one from the Balada Iqbal Ment. So Muhammad is inscribed quite similar to these uh, four. Now I'll explain each coin uh, separately. This would perhaps be the earliest, this coin from, this is the Zeno coin number 272587. This would perhaps be the earliest of the series as it, not only, as it only mentions the name of Guyo Khan. Uh, sans the insignia with Kalema on reverse. Presumably, local coinage commenced at various forts due to disconnect caused between the center at Alamut and those distant forts due to Mongol invasion, the first wave of which did not go much deep towards Khuistan region. The second coin is Guya Khan al Adil, remains with the name remains on the reverse. Kalma is replaced by the name Muhammad al Malik. And then there is the insignia also. Why this change took place can be anybody's guess, but I believe that this had something to do with Mongol policy shift after Guyuk assumed the reins of power, which perhaps accorded some tolerance towards local rulers. Encouraged by that policy, probably the name of Muhammad, the then Batani Imam, citing him as Malik, as the king, was placed on the coin. But this is my point of view. Then this is the same as the preceding coin. And uh, it has been wrongly alluded to, in my point of view, it has been wrongly alluded to be a coin of Farzam Shah Alauddin Muhammad bin Takish and with Tai's reference number 305.2. It can be seen at Zeno 271413. But this is, this is not a coin of Alauddin Muhammad. The same as uh, the preceding coin, the name Guyuk is inscribed in two lines. Gu and then Yak, Guyak. It is in two lines, not in one line as in other coins. The same as the preceding coin, the same as the preceding coin, same as the preceding coin, but then this is a different coin. This silver coin apparently pertains to a period when Guyuk had expired and not knowing about his successor, the local issuers of such coins continued with only the title Khan al -Adil. Another significant shift was that silver was used instead of copper. Now, this is from the SARC auctions. The last is also a post uh, Guyuk silver coin, and it seems that even the title of Great Khan was replaced by the Kalima. Interestingly, that is Shiite Kalima, most of that being of Flan, on the reverse, the name of the Imam, along with the title Al Malik and Ogdai emblem signa, was retained. Thank you very much. <laughs>